Hey, how you doing today? This is OXDF, and we're looking at Scanned from Hack the Box. Um, this was one of the hardest boxes ever on Hack the Box, in my opinion. Um, but we have, I've already done a bunch of analysis in the blog posts, and there'll be a link to, in the description to that, to find the vulnerabilities in this mal scanner. Basically, we upload files, it's kind of meant to be a little virus total kind of thing, and it, but it gives us back a bunch of the sys calls that the file makes, um, so we can see how it works. And we're going to abuse a couple vulnerabilities in this to, to take advantage of that. One is a file descriptor that's open um, in a in the scanning process that we can access from our process that's being run. And that'll allow us to break out of the jail. Um, the other thing we need to take advantage of the fact that they don't handle quite correctly how they remove um, dumpable from, they remove it from my process, but not from the parent process. Um, which means that I can access the file descriptors of that process, which is how I'm going to escape the jail. So um, we're going to we're going to do this a few steps at a time. The other thing is I only can exfil data via these system calls, and so I'm going to have to do it in chunks. So we're going to kind of test that philosophy as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'll do a vim of exploit.c, and we are going to need um, ftdio.h, and then we'll do int main and do file now first thing we're going to do is see, just to sort of see um can we write to this log file uh there's this file and slash log that the parent process is writing um 64 byte structures to one at a time and then the the django website actually picks these up processes them and displays them back and so the question here is can we inject in, into that if we just open the file as a pen throw one of our own structures in there um can we Get that see that data and get it back out because if so then we can write whatever we want and we have a way to you know get data out of the system um, so we're going to create this 64 byte structure here we're going to initialize it to zeros um, we're going to make a unsigned long oops like this buff my c is not great i'm kind of just going off stuff i scraped together off stack overflow here um, but the first so the first word eight bytes in the um in the uh, buffer is the this call itself, and so we're gonna we're gonna make it something high that is unlikely to be called otherwise. Oxdf, oxdf. Um, now we will the rest of it will be zero, and we'll see f write buff uh, one sixty four to get sixty four bytes and written to log. Um, now we can do f close and log, and we can close. And so right there, super simple POC. Um, GCC minus C, or minus O, we'll call this uh, POC1, exploit.c. It compiles fine. Uh, let's go ahead and upload here. And so if this works, what we're looking for is, can we find a log with syscall number OXDF, OXDF um, in, the, in there? And just while we're here, we can say DFDF is 57311. So we have all this. It's going to almost certainly be down here in the ignored syscalls. And here it is with a value return value of zero. So that's awesome. Okay, we can now write to logs. Um, the next question is, uh, can we write something interesting to logs? So let's open another file here. And we'll try our other uh, file to read equals f open. And now we're going to try to take advantage of what we were talking about earlier. Can we get to proc one fd3? And then we'll come back out of that and try to read Etsy password, and we'll call it, we're opening that for, re for reading. Okay, so we're still going to create our buffer. We're still going to overwrite the, um, the first word like that. The next thing we want to do, we'll call, we'll call uh, f read, and we're going to read into um, buff 56. So the last eight bytes we're going to cover. We're going to read one at a time. We're going to read eight times, and we're going to read file to read. Is our handle. After we do that, we're going to then write those the same buffer to the logs, and then we will f close log and we'll f close file to read like that. Now, if this all works, we should have something more interesting than just zero showing up in uh, in our output. Let's come back here, browse this POC number one, submit query. Always takes a second. Um, so five seven three one one. 
and it's here we go. We got we have more interesting data. Let's grab this. Um, if I run Python real quick, um, import struct. Well, let's not do that. I want to do we'll do it the easy way for a second. Um, we can do bytes from hex like this. And uh, that looks very much like the start of an Etsy password file. It's backwards because that's how the byte ordering for integers gets, but we can flip that around real easily. Uh, we can decode that. Boom, we've got the beginning of the Etsy password file. So awesome. So now we want to read the whole file. Um, so we'll come up here. We're going to need one more uh, variable. Am I three bytes in this one? Yes. Yeah. Um, with a size T and we're going to um, basically call this uh, bytes red equals zero. So we'll start with that. Um, and then we'll come down here and we're going to still create our, buff our buffer. We're still going to initialize the, we, we always want the um, this call to be OXDF, OX, OXDFDF. But now we're going to do a while uh, bytes red equals, we can get our, our read our thing here. And then we're going to say this is greater than zero. So while we're reading, while we're successfully reading, we're going to write that, and then we'll be done. Um, so now we're just going to do this over and over again, putting different entries in as we read. Um, I'm going to fix this minor annoyance real quick with a visual block, uh, insert, Space like that. There we go. Okay. So now we'll come down here. We will compile POC3. We will upload it. Submit. And so this time we expect to see more than one 57.311 log um, or syscall. We would expect to see a bunch of them. And there's a bunch more syscalls uh, 57.311. And there's 182 matches here. So this is great. And it looks like it's a bunch of ASCII text. So even better. Um, so obviously don't want to decode this by hand. That sounds onerous. So we will write uh, vim scanner, scan, nah, what's this going to call decode.py. Uh, user bin env python3. And now we're definitely going to, what are we going to import here? We're going to need requests to grab the file, to grab the web page. Um, we're going to need sys because I'm going to pass the um, uh, the URL in over uh, an argument. Um, I'm going to want re because I think we're going to use, we could use like beautiful soup to grab the whole page and parse it and go through it, but I'm just going to use red regexes to pull it out. Um, and then let's actually do, um, I started to do this earlier. Let's, cause it's a little bit more robust. Let's do struct for decoding. Um, so. Uh, we'll start with um, we're gonna want their we're gonna want uh, response equals request dot get sys.rv1 like that and then we're gonna say uh, if response dot status code equals two hundred I guess we'll say if it's not equals two hundred um, print Failed to fetch page. Exit. Okay, so now we, we know we got back a good page. Um, we're gonna do, let's see, words equals re.findall. And now our regex string is gonna look a lot. We're gonna open up the page source here. Uh, it's kind of tiny, but I'm just gonna grab one of these things out right there, paste it in there. So the regex string is going to look like that on response.txt. And let's change, we, the only part we want to capture group around this stuff. Um, we also are going to want, this is, you know, regex is going to interpret these parentheses as another capture group, so we're going to escape them. And then we're going to get rid of all of this. And it's going to become A through F, 0 through 9, and there's somewhere between 1 and 16 of them. There we go. Um, if you want to be cr a little crazy, we could just do a plus there for one or more. Um, let's see what that looks like. So if we do Python 3, I already forgot what I called it, decode.py, and we give it 
that. Oops, let's run it with um, dash i. And now we can see words. We got a bunch of words. Sweet. Um, so if I take w equals words zero, um, if I do struct dot pack, we'll pack it into a, we want this to be an 8-bit unsigned integer. And then we're going to pack int of w 16. So we're going to take 16, we're going to convert it to an integer, which is just how we naturally store that um, hex that doesn't we take we can take the hex text and convert that to an integer that's going to fill somewhere up to the eight bytes and then we're going to pack it into an eight byte structure requiring that and look what comes back it's root just like that um, so we can do that for w in words now we'll have a lot of those and then we can do i think can we do join like this let's find out there we go um so we can print dot decode like that. And that is pretty close to what I'm looking for for a Etsy password file. Um, so that looks pretty good. Um, let's come up here. We can grab, let's see. I don't know if we, we probably want to actually write this to a file because that worked well for Etsy password. But we're going to want some binary files. Um, so let's see. Uh, result uh, res file equals. Let's just do that. Right, no decode there. So that, and we are we've already a little bit more careful with our arguments here. So we'll say uh, if len sys.argv is less than three. Print f string this dot v zero uh, and then we're going to take a url and a file and, and we will exit this is actually sys dot exit sweet okay so if i come down here and if i call this now going to ooh, trace back. It doesn't like sys.exit. Okay. It's not sys. Let's try just to exit. These are not the important things, but we'll just we'll play with it anyway. Um, oh, maybe that's just because, is that because I have an I? Cool. Okay. So now I need a file to put it out to. So we'll call this password and it failed to fetch the page. Okay. These pages time out. That's why I added that thing in there. We'll just re-upload it and get it again. And we can vim password. Uh, it helps. So I've done all that. I forgot to actually write the file. Um, with open sys.argv2. Write binary. Uh, oh, as f, f.write res file. There we go. Run that again. Now I've got my Etsy password file looking very nice. So um, with that, I'm going to call this video. Hopefully this was interesting. Um, again, I, think I always like to do videos for you know the exploitation and code developing stuff because it's harder to show in a post. Um, so I hope this is useful, and I'll talk next time. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>